Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Mike Vandersteen, who isn't to my left and hasn't been now for the last month. He is uh, recovering from some surgery and certainly we miss him, but we'll be back with us later this year. Today we're very pleased to have one of our important department heads with us, Mr. Aaron Brault, who is currently the Interim Planning and Conservation Director. Aaron, welcome. Thank you. Aaron, uh, you probably recognize from doing previous shows, or certainly if you followed the non-motorized transportation program, Aaron's had a leadership role with that for a number of years now, but very recently uh, was promoted to our Interim Planning and Conservation Director and a number of changes in the department. Aaron, why don't you start by sharing a little bit about yourself and a little background? Sure. Well, you touched on uh, a little bit of it. I was previously with the uh, non-motorized program and, and still manage that program within the county. Um, taking a step back even further, um, I used to work for a uh, private consulting firm called Vandewall & Associates uh, straight out of college. Uh, that's a private consulting firm down in Madison, Wisconsin. And uh, um, originally from the area, I grew up in Two Rivers and uh, then moved down to Madison for school and worked there for a number of years and spent uh, three years in Indianapolis running my own business as well. So uh, while I was with Vandewall, uh, Vandewall we had uh, the fortunate uh, chance to work on a number of Sheboygan County communities, so I was uh, quite aware of a lot of the uh, communities in Sheboygan County, uh, not only from having grown up so close, but also having worked for uh, doing the City of Plymouth's comprehensive plan, working on that, uh, also working on uh, the Blue Harbor layout when I was at Vandewall, and doing some of the uh, comprehensive planning for the City of Sheboygan as well. So. So when did you first start with Sheboygan County? When did you come aboard? Uh, about four years ago now. Okay. So and I you're think married January. family? Yep, married family. My wife's a pediatrician here in town. That's actually what brought us to town was her uh, her job. And I have uh, two uh, fine children, one two and a half. His, uh, uh, he's Sawyer, and uh, I also have a daughter who is nine months old. And Very nice. Isabel. Got so. your hands full. So, yes, yes. Two Rivers right now isn't sitting real well with me because they just... Uh, blew the socks off Plymouth, where my son plays basketball. Yeah, Pretty powerful basketball team this year. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, from what I understand, it's, it's, uh, the last few years have been a little rough, but uh, this year they're doing all right. They're when I was in high school and I was a basketball player, Plymouth was our uh, rival. We, I think my senior year we split for the conference title. We each beat one another, and that was it. So. All right. Well, they took it to Plymouth real well last week. Nice looking team. Nice good, looking good. team. A nice community. I've done a little bit of fishing in that area. It's a nice community. Uh, as planning and conservation director, uh, what are some of the broad roles and responsibilities that you have or your department has? Um, we have a gamut of programs. We touched on one, the non-motorized uh, pilot program. Um, that is a pilot, so that will eventually end. Um, 2012, we figure we'll have a lot of our projects wrapped up on that. Um, some of the core programs in our, in our department are the, uh, the septic maintenance program that's mandated by the state of Wisconsin, so we oversee that. Um, we also oversee uh, all our recreational facilities, so the, uh, the boat landings, the trails, uh, the marsh park, marsh lodge, things like that. And uh, on the uh, conservation division side of things, we have buffer strip programs, different uh, farming types of programs to help farmers out um, in their land use and, and uh, conservation efforts. And uh, let's see, what else? All the county's mapping. Uh, we do a lot of the mapping for uh, uh, tax records, things, land records, things like that. So. And I know probably what most people are familiar with with the planning areas the shoreland zoning, or if they're putting in a septic system, you yep. have code administrators that are pretty active in that area. Aren't yep, they? yep. Those are two of our main core programs. As you know, we don't have county-wide zoning. Um, the only zoning purview we have in the county is our shoreland ordinance. So, um, if there's anything that's going to be built within 300 feet of a, a, a lake or a stream or a thousand feet of a, a lake, uh, you come to our office. So, if, if it's have, outside a municipality. So, if you live around. Any body of water, and you're looking at putting an addition on or a new deck or something like that, and you're within I a few hundred we'll, feet, you want to call the planning department. Yeah, just make I sure. I imagine it's, we'll be interacting. Yeah, yeah. So very good. So a breadth of responsibilities. What about total staff, total budget? What's your um, well, recently we combined with the Land and Water Department, so now we are officially the Planning and Conservation Department. Um, and with uh, uh, those folks uh, being added to our department, we have 15 full-time employees, um, 
and the budget is a, is a tough question because that varies year to year based on a lot of our grants, things like the non-motorized program, any other grants that may we, we may receive. Um, but typically it's about a million dollars or less, about 700,000 comes out of our tax levy uh, to run our department, um, which is about down about 25% over the past five years. So, And that can be said about so many, so many departments in, in county government obviously with the economy and all levels of government looking to hold the line on taxes and, and uh, take on more responsibility with less resources, less staff. Uh, many of our departments have consolidated or streamlined and uh, as you said a 25 percent overall reduction in the uh, planning and land and water departments. From the levy, yeah, from, from the tax from, levy. From, from yep. the tax levy. Yep. But your staffing I think is down as a whole as well, is it not? Yeah, I believe we are down four positions after we combine that department, or combine the two departments. Uh, and of course, with Aaron taking on the uh, interim planning conservation director, he is the department head now overseeing this combined department. So where we used to have two department heads, we now have one. Yep. So again, a lot of changes in county government and all levels of government. As the new director, uh, what are your key responsibilities and what are some of the key projects that you intend to focus on? Sure, well, day to day, it's overseeing the department, obviously. Um, and again, I mentioned that I'm also still in charge of the non-motorized program. Uh, right now we have about 27 infrastructure projects that are going through the, the state and federal processes that we have to follow. Um, so that takes up a good chunk of my time, uh, just getting those through the process. Uh, we should, uh, you know, a lot of the folks out there probably heard about this for three, four years now and probably want to know when shovels are going to be in the ground. And we've had some shovels in the ground. Um, County Highway O was under construction last year and will be under construction again this year. Um, that was done in phases. And so that project is moving forward. Uh, Miller Road in the town of Sheboygan will also be moving forward this year. Um, come spring, a couple projects in Oosburg and Adele. Uh, bike lane striping project is out to bid currently. So uh, February 8th, we'll be opening bids for that project. So that'll add about 20 to 30 miles of bike lanes uh, throughout the county. Um, And a number of our other projects are in the engineering phase. So that's a lot of day-to-day -day interaction with the different engineering firms that we're working with um, and involving the other communities in the county that are involved in the project. So uh, reviewing those projects. Um, and, and some of the folks who maybe aren't real familiar with the non-motorized transportation program and just heard us talk about, well, geez, you just consolidated two departments into one. You're streamlining and consolidating throughout county government, all levels of government. How is it that you're able to build a bunch of bike paths and recreation uh, paths and, and perhaps just set the stage there a little bit? How is it that we're able to do this? Sure, in 2005, so like I said, three, four years ago, um, when times were still good or considered good or relatively good, uh, 2005, the, uh, under the Bush administration, the county received a grant for up to $25 million to promote non-motorized transportation. We were one of four communities in the country to receive that and to act as a pilot, basically to demonstrate to Congress what works in this kind of funding and what doesn't. Um, so right. we've certainly seen some of the things that don't work and, and we certainly have seen some of the things that do work. Um, overall now. positive reaction from the community. I think the, uh, the biggest thing has been some of the, the time delays uh, going through this federal process. And, and to be frank, I, you know, Sheboygan County, I don't think in the past has received a lot of federal money. So um, if you ask anybody at in the federal level, they say six to seven years to get a project through the process and, and we're four to five. So. I guess we're moving a little quicker, so. <laughs> it's all relative. Yep, yep. But I know you receive that question from time to time, and I do as I interact with friends or family members, or you bump into somebody at a gas station, you're like, well, how is it they're able to put that new trail in right now? I, boy, times are tough, and I know you've laid some staff off, and it's because of that grant that we received way back in 2005. Yeah, I mean, that's the short end of the stick. Yeah. I, federal money moves a whole lot slower than local dollars, so. Um, and speaking right. of grants, an, th we also receive what CMAQ grants. CMAQ. CMAQ. Yep, that's the acronym. What's uh, it stand for? Congestion Mitigation and Air Quality is what CMAQ stands for. Um, and I, I guess unfortunately or fortunately, however you want to look at it, Sheboygan County is eligible for CMAQ grant funding from the federal government. 
um, where the non-motorized grant's 100% federally funded, a CMAC grant is 80-20. So we do have to come up with some local dollars for CMAC grants. But going back to unfortunate, fortunate, how you want to look at it, because we have poor air quality in the county of Sheboygan, that's what makes us eligible for CMAC grants. Uh, the theory behind CMAC grants is to provide bicycle pedestrian types of projects, also transit, transit capital types of projects to try to get folks, um, sort of the same goal of the non-motorized grant, get folks out of their cars and biking and walking and using transit and more efficient forms of transportation than the automobile um, to help improve air quality. And how's that um, working? I don't know the statistics on if that's working or not. I, I can't, come on, uh, can't comment on that. Um, however, we did receive two CMAC grants in addition to the non-motorized grant for um, the extension of the Inner Urban Trail from Oostburg up into Sheboygan. Um, right now, the Inner Urban Trail, you can basically go from Oostburg to Chicago on a bike facility. Most of it's off-road. Um, there are a few portions in Ozaki County, in Port Washington area, and in, in Milwaukee where you're on street on a marked route, designated route. Um, but basically you can get down to Chicago on a bike trail. Now you're gonna do that in one day, obviously not. No, that's more of a recreational type of focus. Um, but the shorter trips between different communities, Cedar Grove, Oostburg, um, do have some utilitarian types of uh, aspects to them. Um, but again, we got a grant for Oostburg to Sheboygan, a CMAC grant on that. Um, and then we also received for the Union Pacific Rails to Trails conversion. A uh, portion of that project is funded with the non-motorized non grant as well. Um, and that's a section of rail line that's been abandoned in the, the heart of the city of Sheboygan. Um, if you think of uh, by the Walgreens on the corner of 14th and Erie, there's a, the old rail line that runs behind that. The bridge is still over the Sheboygan River. Um, so that's the section about two miles, well, actually 1.67 miles of that rail line will be converted to a trail in the heart of Sheboygan. Um, again, using not only non-motorized grant, but the CMAC grant as well. And it's probably predominantly city of Sheboygan residents who follow this program, although I know it's broader than that. When can they expect that work to continue or begin and, and when will it be completed? On the union, both of the projects that I mentioned for CMAC will be built in 2012. 2012. That's okay. our hopes at least. Yeah. The Union Pacific, uh, I mean, we're keeping our fingers crossed that it's 12. There's a, we're in the appraisal process right now. Um, we still have to negotiate with the rail lines and that can be a, a bureaucracy in itself. I would say rail lines are almost a bigger bureaucracy than any government entity. Um, so uh, we're hoping we can get this taken care of this summer, get uh, things negotiated and purchased and then be able to start cleaning up some of the environmental problems that have been there. Um, you know, it's an industrial corridor through the city, or at least was once an industrial corridor. Um, so there's some cleanup efforts we have to do and then get it built and, and get the bridge resurfaced and redecked. And um, so we're looking at 12 for that. And I'm sure as our viewers are, are seeing, you're clearly an expert in this area and this is where you've spent most of your career in Sheboygan County working on this. And sure. if anyone has questions or suggestions, don't ever hesitate to contact Aaron Brault in our planning department or any of his good staff to, to get more information or if, if you have suggestions on how to make improvement. Let's turn a little bit from non-motorized non program and trails for a second to uh, other areas of the planning department. Sure. And from one extreme to the others perhaps, and that is the Sheboygan Marsh. Uh, there yes. are a lot of good people in this community who enjoy fishing and recreating at the Sheboygan Marsh, just a tremendous jewel for Sheboygan County. And this year, perhaps so more than any year that I can recall, perhaps in the history, I don't know, you may know, but uh, we had a real issue with the bogs, with the, with the wind and the rain and the water levels going up. Uh, how much did we spend to remove bogs this year and what's being contemplated to improve upon the situation? Sure. Uh, like you said, that's a, a real gem for our community, but we did have an issue out there this summer. Um, we spent about $67,000 to keep the boat landing open out at the, at the marsh. Um, 
I, for a variety of factors. Um, I'm, I'm no biological expert or uh, wetlands expert, but um, we had some very high rains and high winds this summer that attributed to those uh, cattails breaking loose and floating down um, to the dam area at the marsh. If you think about the marsh, a lot of people don't realize what kind of a watershed that marsh encompasses. It's about, the way I understand, about 130 square miles that all drain to that one point at the dam. So if we get a, a rainfall in the area in Fond du Lac County, Calumet County, Sheboygan County, that dam or the water levels in that, in that marsh fluctuate uh, quite significantly. Um, so with those actions and then having a lot of those high wind events that we had this summer, um, that high water and high winds just basically rip the cattails out and, and, um, and they float to that one point that I mentioned being the dam area. And, and so um, not only from keeping the boat landing open, we don't want to put excess pressure on that dam and have the dam break, uh, so they need to be removed. Um, historically, it, it, if you look at the records, it, it's about every eight to ten years we start to get events like this. Um, from the recorded history that we have, there's never been anything as large as we experienced this last summer. There were some events in uh, the late 90s, uh, early aughts, if you will, um, that uh, were quite large as, as well. I believe in 01 or in 2000, we spent about $40,000 removing bogs. So it's not a one-time problem. Um, what the, the experts at the DNR recommend is that you do a drawdown every so often to try to mimic past uh, uh, drought um, types of events. And what happens then is the cattails get to root more so, um, there's not as much water on them, and so they have stronger, uh, a stronger root system. And so they recommend every five, six, seven years you draw down the marsh. Um, so we're uh, going to do that this spring again. Um, we last did it in 2001, I believe. And from 2001 until last year, this year, or uh, 09 and 10, uh, we had good summers. I maybe one or two, three loads that we are taking out of cattails. Um, and this year we are up over 500 yeah. loads. Yeah. County truck, the big orange trucks you see on the highway, 500 of the, at least 500 of those truck loads of cattails were taken out this summer. It's so. quite the sight. If you have never been to the Sheboygan County Marsh, first I encourage you to get out there. It's, it's your jewel and it's a beautiful one. We have the new Marsh Tower there. Uh, excellent restaurant, excellent food, excellent service, a campground. And uh, if you, again, if you've never been out there, park on the side, well, you can be on either side, the restaurant side or the tower side, but you can see just in front of the dam, if you can imagine this whole area was so full of bogs this year, you literally could walk across from one side to the other. Yeah. Uh, Chairman Mike Vandersteen, I know, received some phone calls from some duck hunters or bull hunters out there that you know, we're concerned and asking the county to get on top of that and get it removed as soon as possible so they could access the, yeah. the boat launch there and, and get out and, and hunt or fish. And, but it's not just those using the boat launch, it's also the campers. Uh, it can get a little ripe in the summer when those bogs <laughs> come down. And as Aaron said, every year we get a few. It hasn't been too bad the last five years or so, but yeah. the Marsh Advisory Committee, I understand, has recommended that we do another drawdown. Yes. Uh, the Resources Committee will make that decision, and it's always controversial because there's a number of people who are concerned when that drawdown occurs that impacts the fishing or impacts the ability to get in and out of there with your with your boat. Sure, there's a number of, you know, as with anything, I guess, uh, in our day-to-day -day activities, there's different sides of the coin and different user groups that have different opinions on everything. So. Um, you know, some people say that the drawdown is a good thing. Some people say that you shouldn't do it. You should actually keep the water higher. Uh, and then again, you know, the fishermen don't like that. Um, you know, they won't be able to fish for a summer. Uh, they will be able to fish in the south channel. We keep the south channel open, but you're not able to go out, out onto the lake like you normally would be. Uh, duck hunters tell you one thing. A lot of them will say that it's a good thing that you do the drawdown because that provides more forage for the, the ducks and other uh, waterfowl. Um, 
So it's it's a tough situation, a tough and it will be controversial, like you said. Uh, you know, I'm not going to pretend that it's not going to be. So. And speaking of controversy, uh, the recreation fee that the county board enacted about a year ago, uh, as you well know, and certainly your predecessor was a big part of that. A stat we established a recreation fee, so if you launch a boat at one of our six boat launches, or if you camp at the Sheboygan County Marsh Campground. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, $16 a year for an annual pass. If you're a Sheboygan County if resident. If you're a Sheboygan County yes. resident. If you're a non-resident, it's 24 a 24, year. yes. And then the daily pass? Are four and six. Are so, four and six. Yes. Why w was this recreation fee established a, a year ago? What's the purpose of it? Let's start with that. Well, I think we touched on it earlier. It was to help offset costs from the, the tax levy. Um, as I mentioned, our department we're down about 25 percent, and and uh, you know the the cost to maintain these facilities doesn't go down, um, and our revenue streams are so. I, I again I can't speak. Uh, my predecessor, um, you know, dealt primarily with this, but I I can imagine those discussions re revolved mostly around that point. You know, how are we going to continue to pay for these things that we have and and that people want to use? Um, with sh shrinking uh, a shrinking revenue stream, so tremendous pressure on the county board to reduce property taxes. Yet there's tremendous pressure to maintain law enforcement or health and human services or other programs that are actually absolutely essential. Uh, recreation facilities, though, I certainly, in part, feel they're essential because I enjoy them, and I know yeah. you do, and a lot of people do. The fact is a lot of people who are property taxpayers don't use our boat launches, don't camp at the Sheboygan County Marsh, and uh, the board obviously has put this fee in place to have those who predominantly utilize these recreation facilities take a greater responsibility to help pay for them. Uh, as we both know, and I, I think folks who have been following county government know that there's some concern right now about the recreation fee as it's currently on the books. Uh, what are some of those concerns, Aaron, that are being shared and what is being contemplated to improve the ordinance? Sure. Um, you know, definitely I think some improvements can be made to the current ordinance. Uh, some of the big complaints that we've heard are that it's not uh, equitable to all users. Uh, for instance, on the uh, Old Plank Road Trail, we charge for bicyclists and mopeds currently. Um, we exclude snowmobilers in the wintertime and, and folks in the summer who may be using it to jog, walk, rollerblade, what have you. Um, so I, I think that's probably been the primarily, the, the, the biggest concern is that, you know, if you're going to do it, charge everyone or charge no one. Um, we've uh, recently been meeting and, and will continue to meet with uh, the Sheboygan County Conservation Association to get their input into making the ordinance better. Uh, again, I think there are some improvements that we can be made, or that can be made, and, and uh, I think in the next few months we'll see some of those uh, come forward. And, and uh, I guess it's up to the county board then whether or not they uh, enact that ordinance or not. But um, I think some good uh, uh, compromises are out on the table now, and well, I guess we'll see where that takes us. And with the trails, for example, you and I both know that by federal law we the fee could be applied to some trails, but not others. And then there's some state concern with snowmobilers and that you know we could apply it to some users and not others. So my sense is the county board is going to very likely eliminate the recreation fee on the trails just because we can't consistently apply it to all trails and all users. But on the boat landings, you know, that's pretty common. The Sheboygan Harbor has a uh, an annual boat landing fee, I think it's $70 a year. Sure. Um, Most of Random our, Lake yeah. is it's very common throughout the state. So I, I think the boat landings, it can be consistently applied. And the bottom line is, though, most people, including myself, don't want to pay these fees. If we're going to maintain these facilities and uh, be sure they're good for our future generations, someone's got to pay the bills. Yep. Yeah, the money has to come from somewhere. Um, yeah. So moving right along. Um, Oh, we've talked about non-motorized, we've talked about the Sheboygan Marsh, and you touched on a number of programs and services. Another one that was a, a recent initiative, and I think a very successful one, is collecting hazardous waste as well as um, you, um, has, um, unused medical 
Yeah, waste pharmaceuticals. Waste farm, yes. Yeah, Touch we have that, uh, our household hazardous waste program has been uh, very successful. Um, this year we'll do it again starting um, in March, so it'll be in every other month collection similar to what it was the last few years. And then in May we have our, our big clean sweep event, um, and there we partner with Manitowoc, Calumet, and Fond du Lac counties. Um, and on the same weekend, uh, or Friday, May 13th, and, and Saturday, May 14th, uh, we'll have collection sites set up uh, where we do a big clean sweep for the county. And you know, you you would think in this day and age that there wouldn't be that much out there, but every year we still get DDT. Uh, Last year, a guy called up and said, "What can I do with two tons of glycerin?" I, you know, I don't. I, glycerin's not hazardous, but you know, those are the types of calls we get. I, there's a lot of stuff still out there, and an old barn or something that may have been sitting there for 50, 60 years, and uh, you know, the kids are starting to clean things up, and, and they want to know what can they do with this stuff uh, rather than throwing it in the stream in the backyard, which is exactly what we do not want to happen, and that's one of the main reasons we have this. Um, or not so much just throwing it in the stream, throwing it in the backyard, which ultimately gets in the stream. Or, yeah, or dumping or it off water. at our boat landings that we end up having to pick up the right. refrigerators every year that we have to pick up and dehumidifiers right. and things like that. So, um, so yeah, it's been very successful. Uh, we get some grants from uh, the DATCAP, Department of Ag, Trade, and Consumer Protection. Um, as well as there's also local monies. The county board has deemed this a... Uh, uh, a necessary program and so we get funding from the uh, the tax levy as well to help cover the costs of the the household hazardous waste program waste pharmaceuticals uh, a lot of that comes from uh, grants as well but um, that's been successful as well right now we have uh, drop boxes permanent drop boxes at the uh, city of Sheboygan Police Department um, City of Plymouth Police Department, and this year we will uh, be adding additional permanent drop boxes at City of Sheboygan Falls and Village of Elkhart Lake Police Departments. Um, Excellent. And that's again, uh, one, so it doesn't get in the hands of teenagers and, and those who might want to use those drugs in a uh, not so recommended uh, for uh, uh, type of situation, but also to for water quality. Um, you don't want to flush them down the toilet. You don't want to anymore. flush them down the toilet, no. I mean, they're finding uh, fish are starting to mutate and, and uh, some bad stuff going on in, in our waterways from uh, waste pharmaceuticals. Even if it's just Tylenol, acetaminophen, things like that, um, you want to get rid of it properly. We only have a minute remaining, and uh, I know one of the major uh, initiatives that we both have been participating on is the work group to, on the um, Superfund site, the Sheboygan River, finally getting uh, the Sheboygan River Harbor cleaned up and eliminating the Superfund designation very quickly. Uh, what's the status of those efforts? What's the good news for the community? Uh, good news for the community. After 30 years, it's finally going to happen. I think uh, folks have been trying to get this done for 30 years, and we finally got the uh, uh, monies in place. Uh, locally, only uh, 200,000 from the city of Sheboygan and another 100 from the city of Sheboygan and 100,000 from the, the county of Sheboygan. Um, as our local match to uh, finally get EPA, DNR, the locals all on board to get it cleaned up. So, And I overall, uh, Upper River, Lower River, we're talking about a $50 million project. Yep, overall $50 million project, so I don't think that's a bad return on our investment. So Absolutely. It'll be deeper, you name it, cleaner. Well, nice work. Thanks for joining us. We've got to wrap it up. Thank you for joining us. Again, if you have any questions or would like to talk to Aaron Brault directly, don't hesitate to contact our Planning and Conservation Department. Again, he's our interim, but certainly doing a fantastic job, and I'm hoping to be working with Aaron for a long time to come. So, Aaron, thanks for joining us today. Yep, thank you. And thank you. On behalf of the Sheboygan County Board, Chairman Mike Vandersteen, and all of us, thank you for joining us. Next month, Rebecca Persick will be here, our Family Court Commissioner.